Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about things to do during the Edinburgh Christmas that are not the Edinburgh Christmas market. How are you? Hope you're all happy and healthy and well out there. I think Edinburgh Christmas gets dominated by the Christmas market and I understand why. I do it a lot. It's the first thing you kind of think of. It's there, it's big, it's bright, it's colourful. However, it's not the only thing to do. Edinburgh Christmas, the celebration of Edinburgh Christmas, has a lot of things going on. So I thought today it'd be handy just to go through a few of them. Hello everyone, future Tony here. Um, in hindsight, on editing this video and also, hey, sorry, my dogs, as soon as I start filming, Merlin wants to be in the video. Um, in hindsight, I've realised that a lot of the things I've mentioned in this video, I've kind of mentioned before, I've spoke about all the things that are on at the Christmas market and stuff. So I wanted to add a little bit more in at the beginning before we go into the rest of the video. A lot of the stuff you'll see in the video I have spoke about in some form or another before because they're all events that are official Edinburgh Christmas things and we've walked around them. And I didn't want to seem like I was just hashing out the same thing. I wanted to give you information that might be useful to you. So I just wanted to give you some other information as well about what's going on in town over at Christmas. So let's start. You may as well notice that I am choked. I am choked up here. We are a little hot toddy um, just to try to help. If you're listening to my radio show tomorrow night on Edge 2 from 6 till 9, remember no matter where you are in the world, you can listen. You can listen to my radio show, you can listen online at edgeradio.co.uk. You could ask your Alexa smart speaker to enable Edge 2 and then you could listen to me or or you could download the app, Edge Player, and then you can listen to me. Just, just saying, just saying. But if you are listening to me, I'm going to be bunged up on the radio. It's not going to be nice. Anyway, so let's talk about what else is on over Christmas. Number one, Christmas shows and pantos. Obviously, there's the big one, the big Edinburgh pantomime, which is on at the Festival Theatre this year, which I've spoke about many times. Uh, this year, it is The Adventures of Peter Pan, and that has already started, and it runs to the 31st of December, with both matinees and evening shows running most days, actually. It's always an outstanding show. It's always an outstanding show. Um, incredibly funny. Great songs, great entertainment. Alan Stewart, who always plays the panto dame, is a... a a um, variety theatre legend. He is so talented, and all the rest of the cast are as well. But Alan Stewart's just incredible. Uh, Grant's great, Jordan's great, and Claire's great. All the the four main guys. Alan, Grant, Jordan, and Claire. I'm very lucky to to know them, um, and they've all featured on my podcast, Scotch Memories. So you can always check them out if you want to learn a little bit more about the cast as well. Um, but uh, yeah that's running if you fancy that you can go see that sticking with uh sort of christmas shows the lyceum theater has the snow queen that is also running to the 31st of december um that's a christmas play not a christmas pantomime a christmas play it's a different thing um great show by the lyceum <coughs> excuse me the lyceum always put on great shows so it's always worth a visit as well uh, so, so I should have told you ticket prices. For the Snow Queen, it's £22 for adults, £10 for children. It lasts about two and a half hours. For um, the pantomime at the, the Capitol Theatres, uh, the, the tickets are... Sorry, let me bring it up for you. Range from £27 down. Um, these are both big productions, so obviously they're a little bit more expensive. However, I'm also going to give a shout out to the Pantomime at Portobello. They are doing Cinderella this year. Um, I think it's the first time they've had a professional panto there for a little while. I don't think it's done. I think they were getting some work done. It's at the town hall. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to be very lucky and say that I know a few of the cast in this. Two of them, I used to be their boss. Um, Cinderella is on and it is getting brilliant reviews it is honestly getting great reviews if you want to see a pantomime that's a little bit more in budget uh let me see how much tickets are for that one and in, in everyone's budget i think it's around about five to ten pound for a ticket there so if you fancy that again 
great show. Now, moving away from uh, Christmas pantomimes and things, let's go to some carol services. Uh, there's some various carol services on. So, there is, uh, unfortunately, there's one on last night. You've missed that one. That was on the 15th. However, St. Giles Cathedral has a carol service um, on the 17th from 6 till 7 o'clock, if you fancy going there. Also, on the 17th, Carols by Candlelight at Castle Rock Hostel. Uh, Christmas Eve service at Greyfriars Kirkyard as well. So there's a few different things if you fancy going to see a couple of them. Uh, varying prices for tickets. I would if I, I would double check if you need to book for some of them. Some of them you need to book for. Some of them I'm sure you'll just be able to show up and go in. But there's a couple of carol services if you fancy. And last, but by no means least, just something a little bit different. If you want something a little bit different, the... Holyrood Palace is doing um, a talk, a series of short talks on Christmas in the collection. And this is looking at how the royals used to celebrate Christmas using the Royal Gallery of Artwork to help that. And that is on the 21st of December. Um, and you can buy tickets for that one as well. Hopefully that will help. And you can go back to the rest of the video now. First off, starting at this area I am right now. Now this is the entrance into the back end, well I don't know what we call it, the other side of the, the train station from Princess Street Gardens. There's a little bit there, the corner of Waverley Bridge and Market Street. You can go in here and this has got a light trail. Now in fairness, this does lead you around to the Christmas market, but it's not the Christmas market. So I think that should be number one, because look how quiet it is. Now, again, it is during the day, and I'm sure at night time, when this is looking all beautiful and lit up, it might be a little bit more busy when you've got all of that there all lit up as well. But, number one, go on the light trail, go on the Christmas lights. So, with that in mind, we've walked away from the Christmas market on Princess Street. We're here on George Street right now. This technically doesn't count as Christmas market. I thought it does, but apparently it doesn't. So I'm going to run through the list of everything that is officially Edinburgh Christmas, what's going on that's not the Christmas market. Okay, so just in case you're here and you're like, ah, oh, it's so busy, I don't want to go there, and you're looking for things to do, this is everything that's going on from now until the Christmas market finishes, which is the first week of January, I think, officially, is when Edinburgh Christmas finishes. Some of the stuff I'm saying lapses into Edinburgh Hogmanay as well. It's on both of them. Um, but um, let's let's quickly run through everything that's officially Edinburgh Christmas that you can do that's not the Christmas market. Okay, number one. Mentioned many, many times on many videos, but it is something to do that's not the Christmas market. Ice skating. You can see there's quite a large ice, ice rink here on George Street goes in nice one clockwise circle I think you have to go in but you can see it's quiet right now it is what well, it's one o'clock in the afternoon right now it's nice and quiet something away from the Christmas market and as long as you don't mind maybe falling on your bum getting a, a nice cold wet bum for Christmas how many times can I say bum it's like um, Rowan Atkinson he's always good at that sort of thing oh, bum He's always good at that plosive sort of <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but anyway, you can go ice skating. There's really no one on it right now. There's two people going around in circles right now. So a great way to just chill. Oh, look at those chairs. You forget, you could just sit there and have a nice hot toddy. Also listed is this ride on vintage rides. Not the 80 foot star flyer, which goes higher than the Scott Monument. Or the big wheel, which again gets about as high as the Scott Monument. But go on these more smaller, family-friendly vintage rides. I mean, that's kind of exactly the same thing. It's a lot more kid-friendly. That kid's having a great time. And uh, the carousel, which, you know, every kid loves a carousel. I love a carousel. Next up on the list is enjoy the Christmas lights now. I'm assuming the website probably means the original Christmas light trail that I walked through right at the beginning of the video. However, I think we have got to include coming here as well, coming on George Street, um, on both sides of the road here, 
and the dome and the other buildings either side, they always make it look and feel like Christmas. It's always beautiful, it's always a hot spot for people to come in the evening to get stunning pictures. Everyone goes there, everyone goes there at night time because it's lovely, but look at that, look at that, you could get a lovely picture there as well. Everyone always goes to that bit and in front of that, but you've got lots of lovely bits here. So, as well as enjoying the light trail that leads to the Christmas market, step away, come to George Street, um, and there's plenty actually go to the west end of Princess Street as well. I know I've said this already, a couple of things in this video you'll probably notice I will have stated already, but I just want to promote the things that are not the Christmas market. Um, so, the west end of Princess Street, the projections on, um, on uh, Johnny Walker, and the Caledonian Hotel and the Pub Across with a big ribbon on it. All these areas are beautiful and, and nice to enjoy and, and take in the lights and the sounds and the feels. So explore. Well, explore is what I'm saying. Get away from the Christmas market. For a, lar for a large chunk of what we're going to go through now, it's all in here in St Andrew's Square. So we're going to head in there and I'm going to run through quite a list of things that are happening in here. And here we are in St Andrew's Square. Now, the first thing to really point out is this. The Social Bite Charity, I don't know what to call it, Charity, uh, Call, it's more than that, it's more than that. It's a chance for all of us to help those who are struggling, whether it be homeless, people who can't afford food, uh, people who are struggling or vulnerable, anything like that. So you can see, our gifts include warm gloves and hats, warm clothes, uh, walking boots, trainers, children's toys, soap and toiletries, blankets, winter jackets and raincoats, beauty and grooming products, uh, hot water bottles, family board games, arts and crafts set, mobile phone top-ups, thermos flasks, supermarket vouchers, sleeping bags, torches, earphones, all these things can help. So there's the QR code. If you feel like helping, please, please, please help them out. That's a great thing to do. It's a great thing to have here as well. This is also incredibly important the letter writing area to Santa. Now what they will do is they will guarantee that if you have a little one that wants to get the letter to Santa, they will help get it there. There, there's a little write, letter writing station as well. You can write your letter to Santa and this is a post box and this post box is dedicated directly to Santa, to the North Pole. See that? North Pole Postal Service to Santa. That's where they go, you can write them in there, guaranteed delivery. There's also a couple of events going on that you have to book and buy tickets for. Santa Stories. Information's on the website, go on to the website, you can get your tickets on there. So if you want to get, so if you want to go to your Santa Stories, again, I don't know much about them, I don't know what the stories are. Um, I haven't been, but it definitely sounds like fun. Santa Stories, is Santa telling the stories? Why would Santa be a great storyteller? White beard, you never know. Maybe one day, I'll, I'll, I'll be Santa one day. Also in there, they're having festive films. So on the 29th, you can, again, you have to go onto the Edinburgh Christmas website, the, the, the link will be in the description. You can go see a Frozen sing-along, Elf, or Home Alone. All three of those films will be playing. If you fancy going to any of them, but at various times throughout the day, I am sure if you are anywhere near St Andrew's Square for a Frozen sing-along when that is on, you will hear it going on, I can guarantee that. Um, but if you fancy going to see any of them, you can go see them on the 29th. Go check out the website. Now this is the one that kind of merges into Hogmanay as well. On the 30th, because it's on the Hogmanay website as well, on the 30th they're showing Scottish things in there. There's a, there's a film called From Scotland With Love. Not 100% what that is. I think it's vintage archive footage and, and commentary and things of Scotland right up my street. You know I would absolutely love that. Um, and also they're showing a classic, an absolute classic Scottish film of Gregory's Girl. Now this, for those of you outside of Britain, you've probably definitely outside of Scotland, there's a chance you might not have heard of this film, but it is an absolute Scottish gem of a film, um, starring one of my previous guests on the Scottish Memories podcast, Claire Grogan. Um, so if you fancy either of them, that's on the 30th, you can buy tickets to that as well. That kind of joins Edinburgh Christmas and Edinburgh Hogmanay. It's on both of those websites. 
And last thing on the official list of things to do for the Edinburgh Christmas is right here on the mound. Visit our beautiful Norwegian large Christmas tree. And here it is, our beautiful, quite a lot, it is big, uh, Norwegian. I don't know why it's from Norway. I'm sure there's a reason and a story behind it. I just don't know. Uh, Christmas tree, beautiful at night time, all lit up. It does look like the top. Can I, sorry, that was my finger. <laughs> It does look like the top there has possibly had a little bit damaged, maybe by some strong winds or something, yeah? Anyway, there is the last official thing on the list. Well, two things. I haven't actually mentioned the last thing, which is underneath it there as well. Visit our large Norwegian Christmas tree, take a picture. Or visit our apparently official nativity scene where it happened underneath the castle. Apparently. Yeah, did you know that? Well, there you go. Now you know. The more you know. So there you have it. There's all the official things that are going on for the Edinburgh Christmas that's not the Christmas market. Apparently, the things that are not the Christmas market, apparently the big wheel and the star flyer as well. But I definitely count them as the Christmas market because it's in there. And also the, the, the fun fair kids area as well at the west end of Prince Street. That's apparently separate as well, but I kind of count that as a Christmas market as well. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope that helps. If you're still coming now that we're sort of two weeks from Christmas, less than two weeks, week and a half from Christmas, if you're coming now, um, one thing for you all to bear in mind, Christmas Day, if you're a visitor in Edinburgh on Christmas Day, there's not going to be a lot for you to do. And I genuinely mean that. Most things are shut. All the tourist attractions are shut. The Christmas market, I, I'm not 100% if that is open or not. <coughs> I'm going to guess not, but um, it's going to be, if you just, it's always something that happens. Having worked in various tourist attractions in town, it's always something that happens. People who are um, visiting, there's not much to do. So, with that in mind, for Christmas Day, I would plan to do your sightseeing that you maybe want to do outside that isn't going into places because you're not going to find a lot to do. Eventually there'll be some pubs and things open later in the day. Um, not all of them, but there'll be some. But if you're wanting to go to Edinburgh Dungeons, Mary King's Close, possibly the Christmas market, shopping, no, and uh, the St. John Walker Prince Street or anything like that. If you want to do any of them, you're not going to be able to do that on Christmas Day. So don't plan on doing it on Christmas Day. Some of them might even be shot on Boxing Day. So think ahead, plan now before you get here. Don't expect things to be open, because they ain't going to be. <laughs> Sorry, that was just a, a word of warning to you all there. I hope that's all been helpful for all of that today. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Buy a hat. Until next time, bye humans.